In this lecture in Climate and Earth 401, I'm going to talk about the barotropic potential vorticity. We're going to start with the scaled versions of the equations, which states that the time rate of change of the total vorticity, the relative plus planetary vorticity, is equal to the relative plus planetary vorticity times the divergence of the horizontal wind field. So this relates the time rate of change, including the advection, to the divergence of the total vorticity. And again, we're talking about the k component, or the rotation around the local vertical axis in our tangential coordinate system. Again, potential vorticity is a variable that combines absolute vorticity and some measure of the thickness of the column. It links dynamic and thermodynamic properties. And if we go back to the lecture on the solenoidal or baroclinic term of the vorticity equation, we defined these two terms, barotropic and baroclinic, where barotropic density depends only on pressure in baroclinic density depends on pressure and temperature. If we remember our definition of thickness, you can see that when we go to this definition, we're bringing in the temperature, we're bringing in the concept of some available thermodynamic energy. Hence, a baroclinic fluid has more capacity to have the thermodynamics interact with the dynamics than a barotropic fluid. Barotropic potential vorticity is an excellent framework for thinking about dynamics in the atmosphere. The barotropic vorticity equation is a simple and meaningful predictive model. And if you go back and look at the first predictive models, then the barotropic vorticity equation is the first model that was coded up on a computer to do weather prediction. What we're going to do is assume constant density. When we assume constant density, in the height coordinate system, then we will have that the horizontal divergence can be replaced by essentially the vertical divergence dw dz. We're going to integrate over height as we did in a previous lecture. We're going to recognize that w2 minus w1 when we do this integral, that is the velocities at z1 and z2, is a measure of how fast the depth of the layer is changing, and hence we have on the right-hand side of the equation the time rate of change of the thickness of a layer. Now we're going to remember the thermal wind equation, and we're using the thermal wind equations here in pressure coordinates because it's very simple to think about the barotropic and baroclinic definitions in pressure coordinates. When we do that, we have here the thermal wind relationship, which relates the vertical shear of the geostrophic wind to the horizontal derivatives of temperature. We remember that P is an independent variable and a coordinate, hence x and y derivatives are taken with P being constant. We see that for a barotropic fluid where the temperature is constant on a pressure surface, that means by definition that del PT is equal to zero. Hence, there is no vertical shear of the geostrophic wind, and the geostrophic wind is constant with height and pressure coordinates in a barotropic fluid. We bring that back to the equation here, and with those definitions of it being barotropic, we now know that this is a constant here. We can do this integral here. We essentially get the depth of the fluid, and then we can divide by the depth of the fluid to have the 1 over h over here. And then we have that the right and the left-hand sides of this equation essentially have the same form. And we can rewrite this equation as d by dt is equal to the geostrophic vorticity plus the planetary vorticity divided by h is equal to zero. Hence, this quantity is conserved, which is represented here. Here is the conservation of the geostrophic or the barotropic potential vorticity. If h doesn't change, then this states that the conservation of potential vorticity becomes the conservation of absolute vorticity. However, we're more interested in the case where h does change. Potential vorticity then is a measure of absolute vorticity relative to the depth of the vortex. 
Hence, if the depth of the vortex is changing, then the relative vorticity is going to have to change in order to maintain a balance with the planetary vorticity. And we start to see this very important relationship between the rotation of the Earth and the rotation of a weather system on the surface of the Earth. How would we think about this? If we now have that zeta g plus f over h is going to be constant with time following a parcel or following the vortex, then if h increases, then zeta has to change such that zeta plus f over h remains constant. This gives us then the tools of what happens when the vortex hits the mountain. What we need to know is, is the depth of the column going to increase or is it going to decrease? Or does the air compress or expand as it goes up and over the mountain? What we've seen here is there is a relationship between depth and vorticity. As the depth of the vorticity changes, the relative vorticity changes in order to conserve the potential vorticity. We have now linked the rotational and irrotational components of the wind, and we have this interplay between relative and planetary vorticity, which is, again, conservation of absolute angular momentum. And with that, that is an introduction to the barotropic vorticity equation.